G'day folks and welcome to another episode of Moz Recounts. Still haven't been able to get out on the bike so I thought I'd do another story. This episode is Moto Origins. Well then, um, I thought I'd tell this story of how I got into motorbike riding. Um, I've certainly uh, I've seen a, a, a large number of uh, videos on YouTube regarding how the motor vloggers have got into to riding motorcycles, and a lot of the stories started with as they were a child they. Uh, they're in a family with uh, motorcycle riders and uh, they grew up with it and yeah etc etc my story well it's a little bit different i um i grew up in a very loving and very protective italian family so protective that hey i couldn't even i wasn't even allowed to have a push bike okay all this you know, riding when I was younger wasn't the thing. I do recall though, back in the late 60s, uh, my folks took me over to Italy. We had a, uh, I think it was a three or four month holiday in Italy. Uh, my mum was from the north, my dad was from the south, so we, it was split between the two. But when we were in the north, uh, my mother came from a, a little town called uh, Bellagio on one of the great five lakes in northern Italy called Lake Como. Now that might spark um, some thoughts to people because on the shores of Lake Como, is a little town called Mandello del Lario. And that should spark a few uh, thoughts. It's in the province of Lecco, and it's also the factory for motor goods. Well, when we first got there, um, my grandparents owned a um, a hotel resort or what's known as an albergo up in the hills above Bellagio and and I, I recall like I was only eight years old but I recall up there there was terraced um, gardens where all the grapevines were and you could see down into the township of Bellagio. I remember one time um, my cousin had come up and we were all going to go into town, see? And my cousin was riding a motorcycle. And he said, oh, he asked my folks, can I take him, me, down into town by a motorcycle? And yeah, no, nah, that was absolutely not on at all. So, but it, yeah, spark a thought. I always thought, because I was really keen to go, but no, nah, that wasn't going to happen. So, you know, that sort of, I think that might have sparked the thought, because I've always thought about motorcycles since then, uh, on and off, um, but was never allowed to do anything with one. It was some years later, when I started on motorcycles, I was actually 18, okay? Um, I was riding with, with friends, uh, with great bunch of friends on the south coast of New South Wales uh, and we used to and my mates had motorcycles and I'd go down and that's how I learnt to ride a motorcycle borrowing one of theirs and we used to ride down at um, uh, Beecroft Peninsula down near Nowra and yeah that's sort of where I learned and, and eventually I bought my own motorcycle 
which was a, um, a Yamaha TY250. And yeah, my folks accepted that I was riding motorcycles then. It was about that time that I learnt from my mum that my cousin that offered me the ride or wanted to take me for a ride down to uh, Bellagio from the, the hotel actually worked at the Guzzi factory in those days across the lake which was pretty cool, I thought it was really cool and um, and my, my auntie or one of my aunties and, and her partner or her husband, my uncle they, um, although my auntie had a, a little uh, like gift shop, haberdashery in Bellagio they also, also owned a, a factory in um, Mandela del, del Lario and that factory produced bolts they made bolts and they supplied those bolts to the Guzzi factory so yeah, there you go, there's a bit of a connection there and you know um, just a just a bit of a sideline if you weren't didn't know but uh, Moto Guzzi in Italy was the first factory in Europe that actually um, built and, and used a wind tunnel for their uh, motorcycle development especially when they were racing and later on when they uh, started to produce bikes for, for for everyday motorcyclists they're very innovative they also uh, produced the first center stand for a motorcycle and the one that really intrigued me was the uh, the v8 uh, that was pretty amazing they used that for racing didn't last very long but they used it anyway back to my story so yeah i um i had this ty250 this that was my first uh, bike it was um it was a really little shit of a bike you know it, it uh, had an adverse fear of, of water um, it would start coughing and spluttering as you approached a creek crossing let alone getting through that creek crossing uh, many a time I spent on the other pushing it out the other side and basically drying it out uh, even to the point of turning it upside down taking the plug out and giving it a bit of a spin to make sure there's nothing in the, in the cylinder and it was quite and Besides that, it was quite hard to start when it was cold. Um, few, when, a lot of the times we had to push harder to get it going. So I'd had enough of that. And I ended up um, giving it the flick and I bought myself a, uh, a DT250. That was a great little bike, little Yamaha. Great, fantastic little bike. Um, in those days, and we used to ride down the Beecroft Peninsula, as I said, and, and up through Jamboree Mountain, up through all the trails in there. Me, I was the, because the, I started off late in life in motorcycling, I was the one that always trailed behind, you know, forever trailing behind, and mates always waiting for me where, where we were going. But as my confidence build, built, um, I got pretty good and I started to keep up and this little T DT250 was great for that it uh, really improved my riding, it taught me a number of things it also taught me how to come off and tear a ligament in my Achilles tendon and spend six weeks hobbling around I still rode it from where, where the site was back to the, to the trailer so yeah, great little bike um, so I did that for a, a number of years and then as you would see if you saw my previous one where I moved to uh, K-Bar um, K-Bar was where I bought my first road bike and that road bike was a, uh, a Honda CB504 I uh, bought it off a miner that uh, was working underground with me um, great little bike, uh, 
I had a ball with it, riding around town and, and carrying on. And one day I thought, well, it's probably about time I got my license <laughs> before I got caught. So I wandered into the um, police station and this was the, the, the early 80s. Went into the, saw the police officer there, said, oh, look, I want to get my, my motorcycle licence. Uh, what do I need to do? And he said, oh, first thing you need to do is do the, the, uh, the theory test. So you know, he gave me the old paperwork. And did, I did it there and then. Bang, 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 bang. All done. He checked it through, 100%. He said, great, you got 100% on that. And I said, okay. And I said, okay, well, what next? And he said, well, what do you want? Do you want your learner's permit or your full license? Well, I had to think about that for probably about a millisecond and said my full license. And so he said, okay, no worries. He signed off on it. Bang, job done. I looked at the copper and, and said, well, do you want me to bring the bike down and, and do a riding test at least? He said, no. Nah seen you around in the last few weeks riding around you seem to be all right just don't come back with a broken leg that's how i got my motorcycle license back then so interesting little story there and the rest is history that's how i got started in it mainly through through mates um, and trail riding and having a, a ball on it and i think it was sparked way back in the uh, 60s uh, when I was a kid. So there's my little story on how I started in motorcycle riding. I hope you really, I hope you enjoyed that anyway. Look, uh, and uh, I'll leave you with that. Um, hey, leave some comments or your thoughts below. And uh, as always, everyone out there, look after each other ride well and until next time cheers <laughs>